Good morning. In the year 2008, archaeologists uncovered two 9,000-year-old skeletons. There is no definitive way of knowing what killed these ancient people. But we do know that their bones were infected by an all too familiar bacteria. The DNA was sufficiently well preserved for molecular typing to be carried out. And with analysis of high performance, liquid chromatography provided direct confirmatory evidence of mycobacterium tuberculosis. The ancient Greeks knew its consumptive effects as sizes. The Indians knew it as chaki onke, and the English called it tuberculosis. Today, tuberculosis or TB is one of the most infectious killers, causing more death than malaria or HIV AIDS. But what exactly is this disease, and how has this pathogen persisted for so long? Dear all, I'm Vinod Kumar. And today we, Press Information Bureau in association with National Tuberculosis Research Institute Bangalore, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, presents before you this live session on TB, its effects, treatment, its future, and how as a country we are successfully tackling it. I would like to welcome Director General PAB, Sri Manish Desai, to give his opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Vinod. Uh, respected panelists of this webinar, Dr. Ravi Chandra and Dr. Sumshekar. 24th March, as you all know, is a World Tuberculosis Day. And ahead of this important event, the Western Region Media Units of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, that's uh, PIB Mumbai and Goa, Regional Outreach Bureau of Pune have joined hands to organize this webinar to do our bit to create awareness about tuberculosis. The mandate of INP media units, as you know, is to effectively communicate about the policies and programs of Government of India. And they include the entire gamut of subjects, be it economic affairs, social sector policies, education, science and technology, etc. etc. Among these, Health communication has also become an important aspect. Ever since the outbreak of COVID-19 in early 2000, health communication has assumed greater importance. Although COVID-19 remained the focus area, government's focus on overall health communication has now received a fresh impetus. You must be knowing that, I mean, uh, there were briefings the, the national briefings taken, taking place from the National Media Center every single day during the COVID pandemic. And thereafter, we have been holding regular briefings on COVID and the precautions to be taken every day, every week. Over the period of two years, our INB media units, especially in the Western region, have been organizing a number of health-related webinars and workshops. In the process, we have also learned a lot, interacting with subject experts like you people, fine-tuning our communication strategy on a continuous basis. Today, the focus of our webinar is on a major health hazard, but an entirely curable disease of tuberculosis. The only condition being, the patient should patiently complete the entire course of treatment prescribed by the doctors. Our experts on the panel, who are well versed with the Government of India's National Tuberculosis Control Program, will explain these things in detail over the next one hour time, as I am not the subject expert. But we do play a small role, but an important role of being the communicators. Let me tell you, drawing a good communication strategy for TB is not an easy task. First and foremost, there's a need to address the perception challenge. There's a need to communicate about symptoms and treatment. There's need to reassure family members of the affected persons. And most importantly, there's a need to address the issue of stigma. Being an airborne disease, TB can infect anybody, practically anybody. Raja Kobi, Praja Kobi. In this regard, celebrity endorsement, most importantly by the Bollywood icon, Mr. Amitabh Bachchan, has attempted to address these challenges quite effectively. India has been using a combination of mass media and interpersonal communication for effective TB control. As you know, in terms of mass media, apart from the press communication, which the Press Information Bureau does, the Doordarshan and All India Radio, apart from the private television channels, 
We have got a specialized institution of regional outreach bureau, which specializes in interpersonal communication. And we have effectively used a combination of both mass media and interpersonal communication, particularly communicating about the tuberculosis control program. But this has to be a continuous process. As mentioned by my colleague Vinod Kumar, the World Tuberculosis Day is observed on March 24th, the day the German physician Robert Koch announced the discovery of TB bacillus bacteria that caused the dreaded disease. Koch's discovery opened the way towards diagnosing and curing tuberculosis effectively. Further drug developments, introduction of multi-drug treatment have made this disease entirely curable. The theme this year is invest to NTB save lives. This is very significant. By the way, World Tuberculosis Day is one of the 11 global health campaigns of the World Health Organization. So it has got a worldwide focus. Most of the developed countries have since overcome the problem of TB with greater awareness, health investment and better standards of hygiene. It is the lower middle income and underdeveloped countries that are still struggling to overcome the disease. India is a signatory to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, which envisages making the world tuberculosis free by 2030. But India's National Tuberculosis Control Program, the revised strategy, drawn up, it has drawn up a strategy to achieve this target before the deadline, say by 2025. In this regard, Swachh Bharat Mission is also playing a major role in controlling the spread of many diseases, not just tuberculosis. The country has indeed made some rapid strides in control of TB, but due to COVID-19 pandemic, there are reports of some setbacks or some reverses being witnessed, which need to be addressed on urgent footing. Achievement of the goal to eradicate TB by 2025 will only be possible if we adopt a comprehensive approach to ending TB, including the shift towards gender sensitive and gender specific in interventions. So now it has become doubly important to invest to end TB and save lives. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now we have with us eminent panelists from National Tuberculosis Research Institute. I would like to welcome to them to this webinar. We have with us Dr. Devichandra, Chief Medical Officer of National Tuberculosis Research Institute, Bangalore. He's an alumni of Mysore Medical College and has done postgraduate training in internal medicine. He has two decades of experience in practice of clinical medicine. He's working in the capacity of divisional head human resource development at NDA for the past eight years. He is an author and co-author of various research papers published in national and international journals. We have also with us Dr. Soma Shekhar, Director of NDI. He is a pulmonologist and a public health specialist. Involved in implementation of National Tuberculosis Elimination Program in Hassan District in Karnataka. He is also a facilitator, of ma facilitator and a master trainer at NDI, contributed for the capacity building of district, national and international TB control program. He is also a member of National Technical Expert Group, National Tuberculosis Elimination Program. He has contributed to the review and scientific publications in national and international journals. I welcome both of you to this webinar. First Thank question. You. First question, let's, let me ask to Dr. Devichandra. Doctor, what is this TB and what is the burden of TB in India? Sir, TB is an infectious disease uh, which commonly affects the lungs. That doesn't mean that it doesn't affect the other organs. It affects mostly lungs, more than 85% of the cases, and it causes cough, and it is an infectious disease, so the cough of the patient who is uh, uh, throwing out uh, droplets will be infecting others also. So this disease destroys the lungs, and uh, if the patient is not on treatment, there is a possibility of uh, fatal outcome uh, in the patient. So it is caused by a bacteria, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Can you please enlighten us what is the burden of TB in India, how grave the situation is in India and how we are successfully tackling it? So, incidence of TB uh, all over the world, uh, it is quite high, around uh, uh, 10 lakhs. 
uh, whereas uh, more than 26 percent of these tb cases are happening in india so one fourth of the total burden of tb is uh, being suffered by indian population so uh, the mdr tb also hiv tb cases also so quite uh, a high burden of uh, tb is in india so for example the mdr tb cases uh, if it is around uh, 5 lakhs uh, 1.26 lakh uh, uh, mdr cases are there every year uh, in india only okay uh, next question to you again sir uh, what are the symptoms of pulmonary tb uh, they will have a cough that is the most common symptom uh, coughing will be there weight loss will be there uh, loss of appetite sometimes the patient may say uh, chest pain uh, then the patient will be tired so they will have uh, a feeling of illness so loss of weight will be there it can be very significant a cough of more than two weeks and uh, fever usually will be there in the night it is probably because the person is not aware during his uh, active active uh, day life because the fever is low uh, fever so in the night he will be aware and sometimes the patient may also experience uh, sweating these sweatings are not normal sweatings though the others are feeling cold the patient will feel uh, uh, drenching sweats sometimes the patient may have to change the clothes change the bed sheet so so much of uh, drenching uh, um, sweating may be there uh, it is not compulsory some of the hiv tb patients will have it commonly or extra pulmonary tb cases that means the patient who is not having or who is having uh, disease both in lungs as well as the other organs of the body so they may experience these uh, uh, sweats and uh, these patients may also complain of blood in the sputum so that will be an alerting and uh, uh, patient will be afraid so they will come with the history of blood in the sputum thinking that it is cancer so these are all uh, possibilities uh, one has to rule out tb first and uh, uh, these are the symptoms I think you have to unmute yourself, uh, Doctor. I mean, Mr. Vinod. Uh, what you described is the symptoms of pulmonary TB. I understand that uh, there are certain other kinds of TB which affects different uh, uh, organs of the body. Uh, does the symptoms are same for all kind of TB, or it's, is it different? There are two types of symptoms. One is general uh, symptoms and organ-specific symptoms. If the patient is suffering from whatever the TB. They will have these general symptoms of uh, loss of weight, loss of appetite, evening rise of temperature, and uh, so patient will lose weight. So these are all general symptoms. They will remain. And uh, the other types of symptoms are the organ specific. If the patient most commonly they suffer from uh, lung disease, then they will have the cough, sputum containing uh, blood. Not always, sometimes, but uh, cough will be there. And uh, if the person is suffering from TB affecting any of the bones, they will have pain in the bones. And uh, if it is a lymph node TB, there will be a swelling. A patient may be aware, may not be aware. So these are all possibilities. And uh, if the patient is having brain or meningeal TB, we say, so they will have the symptoms related to these. They'll have headache. There'll be the alertness will come down. Patient will be in stupor-like condition. So these are all symptoms which yes, is related yes, to the uh, uh, To, uh, to uh, expand the, uh, on this, um, I would like to ask the same question to Dr. Somashekar, uh, Director of NTI. Uh, which are the other places in, uh, in, in the body besides the lungs that TB can significantly affect and how uh, fatal it can be? Can you please uh, give it an explanation? Again, Dr. Somashekar is... The only the just we have to understand that TB can affect any organ in the body other than the nails and the hair. Wherever the RBCs goes, wherever the blood goes, everywhere it can affect. So it doesn't spare any organ in the body.
An example, as Dr. Vichandra has told that pulmonary TB is the most common. You already mentioned that. That is the most commonest symptom is chest pain, cough. Cough is for more than two weeks that we have to understand. Anybody is having cough for more than two weeks, we have to, we have to rule out tuberculosis. Other extra pulmonary tuberculosis, the most common is lymph node tuberculosis where we see that no, you know, most commonly it affects uh, the young adolescent girls. But anybody can be affected. Uh, neck, neck swelling, they used to come with a neck swelling. So that is the one lymph node TB. The next is pleural effusion. What I, see, what I mean to say is that whatever the lung is there, no, in that there is a covering. It is called the pleura. There, there will be accumulation of the fluid. So there is a, when there is a accumulation, of the, there is a, that is the next common. Where in that case, what we will get is there is a chest pain, breathlessness, uh, all those those things will get that the other commonest uh, other least common not commonest extra pulmonary tuberculosis or it may be a skin tb it may be ophthalmic that is high tb it may be uh, dr vichandra has explained tb meningitis that is the most serious forms of tuberculosis is tuberculosis meningitis that is tb uh, central nervous system involvement of central nervous system and then that is a one all over the lung, all over the body can be affected. That is called miliary tuberculosis. These are the two serious forms of tuberculosis is TB meningitis and then the miliary tuberculosis. Cardia, as uh, it was mentioned, it was shown there. There is what, what I mean to say is there is a pericardium. There also it can accumulate. The water can be accumulated there. It can put a pressure on that. And GI system, it may be af affect the intestines or it may, it can affect the bones also. Dr. Vichandra has already mentioned. Uh, so any organ, kidney, genital, the most common cause of infertility in our country where there is a childless, childless uh, is, is tuberculosis. That we have to rule out tuberculosis, then only we have to go for uh, other, uh, other causes. So among infertility, where there is a childless uh, couples are there, TB is the most common. We know it. Could you please repeat? Uh, your your mic was uh, muted. That doctor, time. Uh, this question is for Dr. Devichandra. What's the difference between TB infection and TB disease? Yeah, this is an interesting topic. Actually, in surgical wards, the medical students, uh, whenever they say wound is infected, say it is actually not infected, they will have symptoms. That is, disease will be there. In TB, we have two distinct uh, uh, things. That is TB infection. TB infection is there in one third of the world's population. That doesn't mean that one third of the world's population is suffering from TB. They have infection inside. In the same way in India, more than 40% of the individuals are already carrying TB bacteria in their body. That doesn't mean that they have any symptom. They may not suffer from TB disease uh, throughout their life. And uh, among the infected, there is a possibility of around 10% uh, breaking down to disease. So this may happen uh, due to various reasons. Most common and what we have identified is when the immunity is low because of HIV, diabetes, stress, or the lung is damaged, uh, smokers, general health condition is low like alcoholics, or there are so many other conditions where uh, the person is not doing well uh, in his life, any time in his life before his death, there is a possibility that the TB may break down into disease. Then they will have symptoms. So what we expect around uh, if 100 people are infected, uh, we say around 10 persons will break down to disease. When disease is there, that is identified by symptoms or signs. So signs are those which are identified by a doctor. So uh, while examining or the patient may complain of cough or pain or stupor, the patient is not complaining, relatives are complaining that the patient is not well or some chest related things, chest pain, loss of weight, all these symptoms are there. That means the patient is suffering from uh, TB disease. So this is the difference between infection and TB disease. But there is another aspect. If the person is having HIV, then there is a possibility that around 100 persons who are having HIV and TB, 10 persons will develop disease every year. So if the person is not on treatment, maybe by 60 to 70 uh, percent will become diseased in their expected lifetime of around seven years or eight years or 10 years maximum 
without treatment. So diabetes also increases the possibility of infection becoming disease. Around 30% of them, there is a possibility in their lifetime suffer from TB disease if the TB diabetes is not controlled well. In the same way, there are other uh, diseases also which uh, increases the possibility of person suffering from TB. Okay, okay, Dr. Thank you. That means that a, a good majority of people have been infected with TB, a latent phase of TB, and they have not developed into full-blown TB. Just like, is it is it comparable to HIV and AIDS, where you get infected with the HIV virus and develop into AIDS later, or can a person go go, go along without getting a full-blown TB at later time? It is possibly uh, not fully comparable because a person who is affected by HIV, there is uh, less chances of he remaining without any symptoms throughout his life. So the latent phase is very, very less. As compared to TB, TB, there is a very high possibility. 90% of those who are infected will never suffer from TB disease. Yeah, unless they are having a uh, comorbid condition like HIV or diabetes. If the person is suffering from uh, diabetes, of course, that increases the possibility to around 30%. And if HIV is there, 7 to 10% will suffer from uh, TB. Whereas in HIV, most of those who are infected will develop HIV disease. They will uh, they will not remain HIV infected. That is the difference between HIV and TB. Okay, 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 okay doctor. Thank you, thank you. Dear audience, Selman Abraham Boxman, biochemist and microbiologist whose research into the decomposition of organisms that live in the soil enabled the discovery of streptomycin in the late 1940s. We can see his picture here. This is the edition of the Time magazine in November 7th, 1949. So from that era started the proper treatment of TB, which evaded humanity for quite some time. Dr. Somashegar, can you please elaborate to us how this TB disease is treated and is it fully curable? Yeah, my well now, yeah. TB disease is treated by, there are two types of drugs are there, first line drugs and second line drugs. First line drugs are, as you already mentioned that, streptomycin is the, the drug as Cells Waxman was invented. After that, INH, rifampicin, pyrazinamide. These are the drugs which has been given to treat the TB. As I, I mentioned that in the TB, there are drug resistant TB and drug sensitive TB. For drug sensitive TB, the duration of treatment is six months. That INH, rifampicin, pyrazine and vitamutal we will be giving for first to two months. And another four months, it will be uh, INH, rifampicin, vitamutal. However, for drug resistant TB, it varies from nine months to 11 months for H monopoly. And for uh, other uh, shorter, oral bradaculin and longer oral bradaculin, the duration will be extended up to 18 to 20 months. As I mentioned, for drug sensitive TB, it is usually six months. However, uh, in spinal tuberculosis and meningeal tuberculosis, it can up to uh, go up to one year or sometimes one and a half year. So the drugs are not given to the patient actually, because as you know that any chronic disease, when you take medications, till the symptoms, symptoms, symptoms subside, then only we will take. After that, we will not continue. So what happens? First initial two months, patient consumes the drugs. When the symptoms goes down, they will not take. So the drugs will be given under supervision. It is called DOTS, DOTS therapy. Strategy is DOTS, directly under supervised therapy. Some patient-centric approach. What I mean to say is, we call as a dot provider earlier, a treatment supporter. We were nearby, acceptable, accessible to the patient. We will keep the drugs. Every day the patient has to go there and consume the drugs. And then, the, as, as, as it was uh, shown in the slides also, for new case regimen, the drug resistant TB, second month and six months, sputum examination will be done. But every month, patient has to go on. Uh, to the doctor and show because there is a chances of adverse effects. To address that adverse effect, to identify, we have to uh, follow up with the uh, every month with the doctor. However, the dot providers are also were trained how to go about that. In a sense, they will refer the patient to the uh, nearest medical officer. Whether it is treatable, 100% cure, yes, if the patient takes the right drugs, right duration, 
without any interruption. If there is interruption, there is always a chance that failure will happen. The patients also can die. So you, shall, you have to remember that def, you should not default. You have to take everyday drugs without any interruption for the right duration. Uh, doctor, uh, not many diseases needs this very long uh, duration of treatment. This therapy is, as you mentioned, it's around nine months. Uh, why is it uh, that uh, this particular uh, strain of bacteria needs a treatment for such a long time? Okay, just I want to give an example. For example, a typhoid bacilli, which is causing, enteric fever is causing, the best bacteria will divide within minutes. However, this uh, within 10 to 14 days, we'll get the disease. Within 14 days, if you take the medications, that's enough. But the characteristics of this beautiful and dangerous bacilli is it divides 18 to 24, once in 18 to 24 hours. And to get the disease, today I got infected. To get the disease, it takes around six months. It may be a 60 years also. So this is a slowly progressing and it divides very slow and to get the disease also from infection to disease also it is longer and that is the reason it requires longer therapy however within two months the culture and the smear may be negative but whatever it happens there is a latent bacilli you are telling about that earlier also in that latent bacilli there is always a chance that metabolically inactive they will not consume the drugs they will like kumbhakarna they will be sleeping we don't know when it is going to get up so if drugs levels are not maintained what happens whenever the kumbhakarna gets up and eats so there is a recurrence the more chances of relapse more chances of failure will be there if you don't consume the drugs for longer period this is the basis and the other thing is to get a complete cure the six months therapy is the minimum duration i am telling you minimum duration it may be it may extend also so metabolically active drugs maintenance is a very important so initially we give four drugs then three drugs and uh, adverse effects also initially it will be more later on once the patient takes the drugs it comes down actually uh, we have to re reassure thank you doctor uh, a message so, to our audience uh, small intervention to make yes uh, doctor just dr somshekar just mentioned about the long duration treatment he said that i mean six months is a minimum duration of treatment uh, that kind of a long treatment naturally will Put a question in the back of a mind of a patient may not be a well-off patient that how do we meet the medical expenditure for such a long duration treatment would you like to say something about and what the government has got in this regard what kind of uh, uh, help from the government it can be available that is for the general audience uh, i think i mean that sure. would be helpful Dr. sure Shikha. well sir very good question you asked each and every drug diagnosis is free of cost, especially in public sector. So the patient need not spend a pie for that actually. In fact, to promote and to reduce the adverse effect, Government of India is giving 500 rupees those who are registered and notified TB cases every month. Till the treatment duration, every month 500 direct benefit transfer will be there once they only they have to give the uh, account number so in advance why this money is given is as you know that most of the patients are very poor patients they cannot afford the thing is the high protein diet if you give good diet adverse drug reactions will be will come down to take care of that to complete the treatment government of india is providing 500 rupees it may be two years also not only that, for treatment supporters also, we will be providing an incentives. What about that uh, pu public sector I told? What about the private sector? Whether the patient is diagnosed in the private sector or public sector, the treatment and the whatever the benefits are same for them also. If the patient is not ready to come to the public sector, in the private sector itself, they can take a treatment. Only thing is under supervision. Everything is under supervision. They have to complete the treatment. Not only that, even private doctors or a nursing homes, there also they will be given incentives as an honorarium. It is not as a fees and other things. The consultation fees and other things, whatever the private doctors charges, they have to give. But for the other treatment and whenever there is some difficult diagnosis also, the government of India will pay for that. Not only that, if there is surgery, admissions, Heishman Bharat, PMJY, they also, they can be linked to that. 
so okay. basically uh, reassure people that that cost or cost of treatment is not a uh, challenge in this and people should avail the government's facilities and to come forward to take sure. treatment that's right sure, sir, sure. Yes, yeah, sir. thank you very much thank you thank you doctor uh, a message to our audience you can post your queries on the youtube live chat that you are seeing now and it will be answered live by our expert panel members next question is again to uh, dr somshekar uh, once a person completes the treatment for tb disease and he is cured can she can he or she get tb again yes there is always a chance that around 10 to 12% of the patients it is called relapsed tb or recurrent tb it can recur that is the reason as i mentioned actually in the previous slide after treatment also after 6 months of treatment every 6 months up to 2 years the patient will be post treatment follow up we call it as a post treatment follow up every 6 months we do follow up every 6 months patient has to go to the doctor and whether symptoms are there not they have to go suppose in between if there is a reappearance of symptoms they need not wait 6 months or 12 months only scheduled visit we have to go immediately they should approach but all will not get the relapse only a few patients will get the relapse positive thing is there is 90% 85 to 90% they will not get they will be cured but they should remember that as you mentioned that a caution it can relapse or recur also depending upon the risk also because smokers alcohol after taking the treatment oh now my treatment is over i will start the smoking and drinking so there is always a high chance and those who are diabetic what they will do if it is uncontrolled there is always a chance so these are the people that will get a chance the recurrence and under nutrition also one of the major this one that we get that Okay, doctor. Thank you, thank you. But uh, that is also once again. Sorry, I want to reassure once again that relapse TB also curable. You you should not bother that. But you should have it. Keep it in mind that it can relapse. That is also curable. Okay, okay. Uh, doctor Devichandra, what are the dietary restrictions that has to be put in place, or what are the specific set of diet that you have to consume while undergoing the treatment for TB? Actually, there is no special diet prescribed for uh, TB treatment. during treatment whatever nutritious one one can afford the patient is advised to take there are uh, some superstitions which say that you have to take non vegetarian food you have to take beef all that is unscientific not at all recommended if culturally is not acceptable don't take non veg if it is acceptable please take egg if it is acceptable because egg gives a very high proteinaceous uh, food even if you don't take egg if you are taking all other Uh, nutritious food that is available at home you will get cured but there is a importance that you have to take your tummy full when you are on treatment you will have more appetite so patient will start uh, i mean they will become more energetic they will start getting hunger and loss of appetite symptom will go away and they start gaining weight at that time uh, no compromise have full tummy full food uh, take all types of uh, vegetables green leafy vegetables um, then you will gain a uh, good weight there is no special diet prescribed so no no, no worry about uh, taking any special food for tb treatment so the only special thing that you have to take without miss is full treatment course of drugs that is very important along with it of course uh, a full stomach okay okay doctor now uh, the next question is to director it's a very specific question doctor what is it what's the relation between hiv human immunovirus and tuberculosis the modern types these two terms are very radically intertwined it's a deadly combination <laughs> what i mean to say is dr travichandra has already explained whenever there is hiv the immunity goes down tb is also like that those who are infected with the tb if there is hiv the chances of getting breakdown of the tb infection to disease is up to the tune of 70% in their lifetime every year whatever the annual risk what we say that it's however the only thing is when there is a, that is the reason see for all others whenever the patients comes with the symptoms then only we ask them the, and we do the diagnosis and uh, we prefer for the laboratory investigation chest x ray however hiv it is intensified case finding every month when the patient goes to take uh, 
ART drugs, that is antiretroviral drugs, HIV drugs, the doctor will ask the patient, do you have any symptoms for symptom complex? Because early diagnosis of tuberculosis is very important on that. So it is intensified case finding activity. There we do it because not only a TB, the other opportunistic infections are also there. And drug, drug, or other opportunistic infections we have to take care. For that also, we will give cotrimoxazole prophylaxis therapy for those who are having HIV. The other, other, other things, the benefits of early diagnosis is you can cure early also. You, you whether the along with the ART, antiretroviral therapy, anti TB drugs also has to be taken together. But certain antiretroviral drugs, the doctor will modify it based on whatever the anti TB drugs we are giving. So even earlier, within five to ten years, the chances of patients HIV are dying more. Now we seen that up to twenty years on treatment, like it is a manageable chronic disease like a diabetes and hypertension. Only thing is the most common cause cause of death among HIV is tuberculosis. The most common opportunistic infection among HIV is tuberculosis. Once again, it's a cause for death. So you should be very careful. You have to identify and treat tuberculosis. The, the HIV can be manageable. An ancillary question to that, doctor. Uh, HIV uh, therapy consists of highly active antiretroviral drug and TB consists of this dots therapy. So this is like a cocktail of a significant number of drugs. How does a patient prepare himself to take this amount of drugs and what are the side effects that one should be prepared to accept? Exactly. When there are more number of drugs are there, more number of tablets are there, when they consume, it's like a mini breakfast. So what happens? So that is the reason. First, if there is, we I did diagnose TB and as well as HIV together. First, we give treatment for tuberculosis. After two week, two weeks only, we start antiretroviral therapy. That is HIV treatment. The reason is we don't know because the adverse effects are similar for HIV as well as for the TB. It may be vomiting, gastritis, itching, all those things. So once the anti-TB drugs are, once the patient tolerates, then only we are going to start the anti-retroviral therapy. But the thing is, there is always a chance that more adverse effects will be there. These are closely monitored and also blood investigations every month, if possible, clinical examination. And they will be in touch with the online. There is a supporters will be there on telephone and more supervision is required. But it is manageable. Only polypharmacy, yes, we do have there is always a chance that more adverse effect, but we can manage those things by frequent monitoring. Thank, thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Now, uh, next question is to Doctor Devichandra. This is, is an important uh, question uh, with respect to the current times that we live in. Any connection between COVID-19 and TB? Are there any precautions to be taken? Changes in treatment or anything else to be borne in mind by patients and general citizenry in view of the emergence of COVID-19 pandemic and its potential relationship with TB? Yeah, programmatically and uh, disease itself, there is uh, I mean, not much uh, disease itself, there is not much of a relation, not yet proved. Uh, see, diagnosis of TB came down drastically because of COVID-19. So fear of getting COVID-19, if the patient is uh, visiting the hospital was there, so patients were not coming, even though they have cough, resources and uh, manpower from TB got diverted to COVID work. So many of the TB workers, they started working for the COVID. So TB work suffered and uh, frequent lockdowns, transport was not there. If the patient is suffering from TB, they are not visiting hospital, they could not visit. So this was a major impact on TB program. It has gone back some five to 10 years. So another uh, important thing is cough was there, which is both common to COVID as well as TB. So people used to get confused. And if the patient is suffering from cough, they are not interested to come to the hospital because they may get uh, isolated. So 15 days, they are not there in the house. So this fear was there in all the population. They are not coming. So they kept on coughing and they kept on spreading the disease to all others in the family as well as in the society. This was a major problem. And uh, that is the reason in the initial phase itself, government of India issued a circular. If the patient is coming for diagnosis of TB, they have to be checking for COVID also. And those who are coming for COVID, uh, 
diagnosis they should also be given sputum for tb checking this circular was there in the initial uh, part of the uh, pandemic itself so so these things to some extent happened and uh, we could do some justice but tb suffered uh, uh, a lot many of the tb patients they could not come they were not diagnosed so they did, they died because of this uh, problem the is there any possibility of uh, interaction between the tb and covid so far no evidence the only thing that is uh, i mean uh, some uh, curiosity is the extra pulmonary type of tb is increasing so extra pulmonary tb uh, when it is increasing uh, what is the reason we don't know normally we expect around 15 to 20% maximum most of the times we we have seen 18% around extra pulmonary tb as compared to uh, the pulmonary tb now it started increasing so wherever there is more covid more extra pulmonary tb cases so so these are all things which uh, which are fodder for the future research so so far direct evidence is not there that there is a, a direct relation between these two diseases so these are to be investigated further uh, thank you doctor for letting us know the logistical issues that create covid 19 created uh, uh, for the screening of tb uh, as the, we have learned recently uh, that uh, mass screenings using uh, uh, artificial intelligence by uh, by uploading the x-rays into an artificial intelligence software and screening it so uh, th these are the latest technological developments so uh, can you briefly explain doctor how this ai is used uh, to uh, screen tv see artificial intelligence doctor. is coming up uh, in a big way so in every sphere of our life artificial intelligence is being used in the same way tv also so around five to six districts of uh, Karnataka also. So there is, they have developed an app and another app is also being developed where the X-ray image is fed into the artificial intelligence app, which will say whether the uh, patient is having a, a normal chest X-ray or an abnormal chest X-ray or suggestive of TB. And there are uh, other things that are all going on. For example, uh, CTD, uh, there is a... Uh, uh, there is another experimentation that is going on where the sound of the cough is being analyzed by the computer or artificial intelligence to uh, know whether this cough is similar to a TB cough. So by seeing that, uh, whether it is possible to predict uh, TB. So these are all some of the things where artificial intelligence has uh, been helpful to uh, medical fraternity. So experiments yes. are going on. Yes, doctor. Uh, what we understand is that even a basic device such as Raspberry Pi can be used as a endpoint node to create and upload the data into the cloud. And uh, massive gains in computing power is uh, taking a lot of radiologists in, uh, in, in screening TV. So the next question uh, is to Dr. Shomashikra. Uh, what's drug resistant TV and who is at the maximum risk of contracting it? Drug resistant TB is a TB where the bacteria is resistant to first line drugs. As I mentioned to INH and rifampicin, these are the first line drugs. If the bacilli is whatever the bacteria, mycobacterium tuberculosis is resistant to INH and rifampicin, it is called as drug resistant TB, that is multi drug resistant TB. Mono drug resistant TB is also there for INH and XDR TB is. What I mean to say is for second line drugs, second line drugs is whatever the drugs we are giving for multi-drug resistant tuberculosis like levofloxacin, linozolid and bradaquiline, any of this plus, uh, plus any of the first group A drugs that is one is fluoroquinolone that is INH and rifampicin and fluoroquinolone. This is pre-XDR, XDR is INH, rifampicin, fluoroquinolone or bedaquiline or linozolid. This is called uh, XDR, XDR TB. The most common cause is the bacteria always after certain mutations, what happens? There is always a chance that natural mutation. But uh, for INH, it is 1 in 10 to the power of 6. For rifampicin, 1 in 10 to the power of 8. So one bacilli to become a drug resistance, at least 10 to the power of 14 is required but it is a very rare chances. The most common cause for drug resistance is we, we are responsible for that. We have created an environment for the bacteria to 
resist to develop a drug resistance. It may be a poor quality of the drugs, or it may be non-availability of the drugs, or it may be a wrong dosages, or wrong combinations, unsupervised treatment, absence of guidelines, non-compliance, or health system is non -mon -mon not monitoring the treatment, or there is a poor, poor funded or poor adherence. Or there may be a chance that the patient might be taking the right drugs also, but absorption is less. And there is a social stigma where the patients are not ready to go and take the consume the drugs in front of others. So there is a chances of default. So it is one is a doctor's cause, another is a patient cause. Both are responsible and programmatic cause is also responsible. But uh, the chances of cure among drug resistance is only up to the 50 to 60 percent only. Whatever we do that because more adverse effects will be there, long duration of treatment. That is the reason the best. To, this one is prevent drug resistance by consuming the drug six months, right dosages, right standard treatment and uh, right follow-ups. That is very important. Utterance is very important. Okay, uh, let's continue that discussion with the doctor uh, uh, Ravi Chandra. Uh, what is multi-drug resistant tuberculosis (MDR-TB) and what is extensively multi-drug resistant tuberculosis (XDR-TB)? Can you please explain that in detail? Doctor, your mic is on mute. The definition of uh, multi-drug resistant TB is. The TB which is resistant to two most commonly popularly used drugs that is rifampicin and IMH. So without these drugs, you cannot cure TB. So that is the condition. So when these two drugs, they become resistant, then it is called as multi-drug resistant TB. Though we have four drugs, these two drugs are very, very important. That is your MDR, multi-drug resistant TB. What is XDR? So TB caused by a mycobacterium which is already resistant to INH and rifampicin. That means the MDR bacilli, when they become resistant to fluoroquinolones, levofloxacin or moxifloxacin, and along with it, if they become resistant to the newer drugs like bidaculin or linizolid, these are the two newer drugs, very important drugs, either of them or both of them. If they become resistant, then we call it as XDR. So, it will be difficult for the uh, for the uh, treating physician to cure these patients because the bidaculin is a new drug, a very good drug, so which has given hope for those patients who are suffering from XDR. So if that is gone, then it will be very difficult. So of course the research is going on; the other regimens are also coming. So uh, the message is very very clear. The practitioners who are practicing TB, sometimes there are practitioners who are practicing MDR-TB also. So they should be very careful, never misuse the drugs which are uh, new drugs. See, we have faced multi-drug resistant TB and we have killed many patients because we have misused rifampicin. The message is very clear. We should never misuse the drugs. The patient should get the proper dosage, proper regimen, and patients also should take all the drugs responsibly. If this program gives a very clear message for those who are suffering from TB, if the doctor says six months of treatment has to be taken, the patient has to take it, whatever uh, the patient is. So they have to complete the treatment. That is very, very yes, important. Doctor. Yes, doctor. The, 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 the therapy is six to nine months long. So what are the side effects of such a long duration of medication? Uh, Dr. Somashikara, can you please answer this question? What are the side effects of such a long duration of uh, medication of a cocktail of drugs? Yeah. Here, uh, this is for a drug resistant TB. It is I, it is very, very more side effects. However, this picture, whatever we are showing is for drug sensitive TB, the six months treatment duration, whatever you are told that. Any drugs, when you take for more more longer period, there is always a chance that we are going to get a nausea or vomiting sensation. Actually, it is a not a nausea or a vomiting. You feel like the reason being when you take more drugs, we tend to consume more water, a full glass of water for one tablet. If you take more water, there is always a chance of nausea. So the best way is. When we advise, if you feel nausea and vomiting, so 
please take within 15 minutes with little water, one one drug only. So within 15 minutes, he has to consume. And the uh, next uh, most common is there is always a itching. The patient may develop itching. A, a normal antihistaminics can cure that. Uh, there is always a chance that it will go or the, because of the skin dryness also the patient. The patient may develop. We ask them to use moisturizers or coconut oil, whatever it may be. So that will go most commonly. The other commonest is uh, gastritis. Uh, uh, always there is a chances of gastritis. So we tell the patient to take the food and then only consume these drugs on empty stomach better not to take if you can tolerate it's okay otherwise you should not there is always a chance that uh, uh, what i mean to say is uh, earring loss when we are giving injection earring loss was there now we have gone away with the injections then blurring of visions for ethambutal tablet there is always a chance blurring of visions the first symptom is the green leaf looks like a red so that is the first sign. If there is a change in color, any abnormal color, so optic neuritis, we have to uh, meet the, uh, the medical officer. They will refer to ophthalmologist. We have to stop the drugs. And uh, some other drugs are also there where we may get a thyroid disorder in the sense there is uh, thyroxine levels may go down. And for pyrogenamide, arthralgia, joint pains, this is also there. But all these side effects are going to settle Within within two months, the patient should be assured that we assure the patient that continue taking medications unless unless otherwise severe, because the doctor will tell that it get adjusted. The body get adjusted initially. Liver enzymes and our body get adapted to that. Then he can continue. But wherever whatever the minute side effects, please tell the doctor. He will okay. guide you. Yes, doctor. And we will we'll come back to that. Uh, next question uh, we'll post to Dr. C. Ravichandra. Uh, Albert Kalmet and Kamala Green, these were the two French scientists of, uh, whose work from 1905 to 1921 uh, developed the vaccine for TB, BCG vaccine. BCG is, of course, an abbreviation of the Bacillus Kalmet Green, which means Bacillus of Kalmet and Green, uh, first uh, came in the year 1921. So, in this context, what is the status of TB vaccination now in our country, doctor? And how long does it take for India to completely eliminate TB? See, elimination of TB is the vision that is envisioned by PMO. So the world was aiming at eliminating TB by 2030 and India wanted to do it by 2025. Imagine we have 26% of the whole burden of TB in India. So it was an impossible task or a difficult to uh, reach task. So this was envisioned by PMO and uh, the whole uh, gamut and the whole department of TB got activated. Uh, every month there used to be one new addition. Every and every uh, entire thing became digitized. Uh, new strategies were developed. So all this happened after 2014. So lot of new changes happened. So we were aiming at uh, doing this uh, to TB so that we'll be able to end TB by 2025. Of course, in between. You all know that pandemic came, all the TB workers were diverted. So there is a, a difficult task to do it. Of course, the game changer is uh, if vaccine is, is available, yes, vaccine will definitely help us. We have TB preventive therapy, which is going to be of great help. Now, TB preventive therapy is already started all over India. So that will be of great help. Earlier, we used to give only for those children who are less than six years and now less than five years. Now all the householders of the TB patients will get uh, vaccine, I mean, TB preventive therapy. And uh, uh, vaccine is under development and NTI is one of the sites among the other 12. So if the vaccine comes, then there is a possibility that uh, there is a hope that we may be able to end TB or eliminate TB. And uh, there are other things like, for example, all the poor nations will have malnutrition as a major cause. India main driving force is malnutrition. So there is a need to uh, end malnutrition to end TB. That is a prerequisite because 15 to 55 years age group, 50% of them are malnourished and they are contributing to around 30%. Smoking contributes to around 10%. There is a need to have a solid strategy. 
and the indoor air pollution is causing around 12 to 18 percent of those uh, TB patients. So there is a need to extend and effectively implement Ujala scheme so that every householder will get uh, LPG gas so that indoor air pollution comes down. And uh, diabetes, of course, diabetes is a problem. And uh, because of diabetes, there is a chance that around 30% of all those uncontrolled diabetes patients will suffer from TB. So that has to come down because uh, for that, t uh, diabetes has to be controlled. And uh, of course, the yes, uh, India is becoming, yes, uh, India is becoming we... uh, diabetes yeah, yes, capital. Uh, yes, yeah, yes. Please. Uh, uh, before we uh, move forward, we have a special guest from Goa. Uh, welcome, Dr. Manish Gaunaikar. He is the head of uh, state TB mission from Goa. Uh, doctor would like to discuss a few topics uh, with NDI. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Doctor, uh, for the wonderful uh, information being shared uh, on this occasion of World TB Day. Uh, so, as uh, we have uh, already said, we have already said that a uh, lot of activities have been started. Lot of initiatives have been started uh, by Central TB Division uh, all over the country uh, to achieve uh, TB elimination by 2025. <clears throat> such as bi-directional bi screening for TB and COVID, uh, then a uh, lot of, uh, we are doing post-treatment follow-up. We are doing uh, screening for, uh, our screening for TB, presumptive TB examination has been scaled up. We are starting with uh, TB preventive therapy and lot of other activities. Uh, recently, we had uh, sub-national certification uh, going on all over the country. Uh, also, we are developing uh, AIF, for uh, cough sound recording uh, to know uh, to, for diagnosis, also AI for X-ray. So with uh, all these activities being taken up, uh, we still find that the public uh, at large uh, is uh, not coming forward because of, maybe because of COVID, uh, there is some scare in their mind uh, that they are not coming forward to get themselves examined, get themselves screened uh, in spite of being symptomatic. So, uh, if you could uh, give a message to them as to, to, to public at large so that uh, they are motivated and they uh, come forward and get themselves examined. Yes, Doctor. Sir, uh, is it a question for me or Dr. Chandra? Yeah, uh, Dr. Dr. Somsi uh, Kara, if you could. Uh, yeah, I'm thank just you, Dr. Vijendra, may please answer it. <laughs> no, no. I, anybody. So, uh, very nicely highlighted the World TB Day this one. Just to, uh, yeah, Manish sir was also mentioning in the initially, the burden of tuberculosis is like this. So, every minute we are, uh, t three deaths are happening. Every day, 28,000 infections are happening. This is a global figure. However, when it comes to India, one third of the death is in India. How to prevent that? As already we have addressed the, 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 the whatever the uh, knowledge about tuberculosis, what the program is going on, all those things. The best message what I wanted to give is anybody who is having a cough, it may be our family members or our friends, please get them checked for the tuberculosis. We, we have to suspect tuberculosis among them. And then it is not TB, it may not be. Maybe if you examine 10 TB suspects, one TB patient may be there. But quality diagnosis at the designated microscopy centers and the good quality of this sputum we have to take and we have to get it tested for drug resistant TB initially itself. Earlier, after six months of treatment, you used to get that. Now, within in the initial part itself, we, are, we have a very wonderful NAT diagnostics like RT-PCR and uh, whatever you used to say for the COVID. No, like that. We are having RT-PCR test like that. Gene expert is there. True NAT is there. And then uh, culture is also there. Now, when it comes to the culture, uh, it is only in the uh, intermediate reference laboratories or national reference laboratory. It will be there. So complete picture of the TB bacilli characteristics, if you identify, it is easy. First, understand the enemy. If you understand the enemy, you can easily kill. So this is the tool available, understanding the enemy, we can kill it. But the thing is, with the correct diagnosis, correct duration, and 
correct management and it is not only a single person you and like me can be can be a part of this ntb game actually each and every individual society community business people corporate sectors not only government in private sectors also unless we fight together it is very difficult community awareness community task force uh, dr manish gaurankar may be having a lot of uh, interventions in his uh, state like that different states will be having uh, involving the community tb champions treated tb patients also we can involve in this so to create awareness and early diagnosis and treatment the to cut the chain of transmission early diagnosis and prompt treatment so that is the only tool and for the politicians or the local uh, pris uh, invest manish sir has told uh, the world tb day theme is invest in tb to save lives any program requires three things one is money manpower material money is required to run the manpower as well as material so all these things unless we invest it is difficult we cannot save the lives we are going to lose so yes, many yes, deaths thank yes, you yes doctor let me come let, let me come to it uh, can you please explain how as a country we are investing in eliminating tb what are the novel research initiatives at that government of india and especially your organization nti is taking to eliminate tb let's come to the crux of our yes. webinar today exactly the funds has been four times increased domestic funds actually we used to get the international funds and uh, in kind and uh, in soft loans but in the recent uh, maybe uh, uh, eight ten years the domestic fund has been increased drastically but is it sufficient globally there was a uh, this one whatever the for the covid vaccine within 18 months 100 billion has been invested however for the tb it is only 117 million only out of the whatever the budget kept for tb only 50 percent has been uh, given to us so what i request the governments and other uh, organizations or the states is whatever the money is there please provide to that don't utilize to some other this one in one of the northeastern states we went for a supportive supervision where the tb money has been drawn to covid not only human resources so TB, how we can eliminate TB or uh, diagnose TB cases? More deaths are going to happen. See, TB kills not now. TB kills after two years. COVID kills now. That is the reason people think that uh, COVID is the main killer. No, it is the TB is the killer. It is going to continue. TB kills more. So we have to invest. Our organization is mainly for uh, training and research. We do train from frontline workers to ASHA workers to program managers national level or international level sir country consultants will come zero countries will come ours is a who collaborating centers and the research is a laboratory research we have to give quality control uh, of the whatever the uh, diagnostic tools i have told from microscopy to sputum collection microscopy to culture we are going to do that uh, quality assessment and quality quality assurance and then dr vichandra was mentioning about bcg uh, we know also mentioned bcg has been given to prevent childhood tuberculosis deaths due to childhood tuberculosis not the pulmonary tuberculosis so please remember all the whatever the uh, whatever you are hearing all the webinar participants hot birth we have to give bcg or within one month so such that among the children tb meningitis and we can prevent TB meningitis or childhood tuberculosis like miliary tuberculosis. These are the two serious forms of TB. We can prevent that. And the next is vaccine. We are doing a vaccine trial uh, with along with the ICMR where this vaccine, not the BCG vaccine, this vaccine is to prevent from those who are infected to getting the disease that we can do that. And our uh, in institute is also involved in supportive supervision. After training, we go to the field, how the program is implemented, uh, uh, any lacunas are there. This is called operation research. Program policies and guidelines we teach here, import the training and the field, how it is going on, what are the lacunas we identify. This is called operation research. We are doing this type of research as well as training activities and providing laboratory yes. services. Quality yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Uh, 
uh, one last question from me. Uh, this is towards Dr. Ravichandra. Uh, as the head of training division, what is more uh, head of training division of NDI? What is more required and needed to be done, especially by the citizens of India in our national fight to eliminate TB? What's your message, Doctor, to the uh, viewers who are watching this webinar? Yeah, let us be simple. As uh, Dr. Sumshekar already has told, so anybody who is having cough of more than two weeks, whether you are suffering or someone else nearby, he may not be aware. If he is having cough of more than two weeks, please direct them to go to uh, a place where the testing is done. That is the most important thing. There is, There should not be any need for the uh, Manish sir to go and uh, uh, search for the patients. They should come. So that is an important thing. And if all the patients are coming to the government setup or the government recognized labs, more than 90% of the work is done. The second most important thing is all those who are started on treatment, it is a national duty to complete the whole of course of TB treatment. It is not just for saving your life. It is to save the lives of your own householders, your own relatives and the neighbors and the Indians. Finally, it is our national duty to completely get cured of TB. And uh, when the doctor says, please come, even after curing, every six months, please visit. So never get annoyed. Please come and talk to the doctor. And for two years, he is interested to see whether you have a recurrence of TB disease. Even one day cough, you must visit and give the sputum for testing. This is an important thing. So that will prevent, uh, we will be able to eliminate TB very shortly. Yes, doctor. We have a question from one of our viewers. Mr. Riaz has asked this question. Should children or elders be excluded from school, work or other activities if they are suffering from TB? As in self-isolation is okay or not? No. Actually, isolation is uh, not necessary. Like uh, already Dr. Somshekar has described, see, two weeks of cough is already there. That means he has already infected whoever you want to infect. So there is no, there is no need for isolation. One reason. The other reason is the drugs that are given to TB treatment is the most effective. They are gems. That's why they should never be misused. So rifampicin, INH, the first line drugs that were described, they will uh, decrease the bacillary load so fast. Loads of bacilli will get killed within three days. And within two weeks, the patient will become least infective. And within two months, so they are almost not infective. So there is no need to isolate. The only thing is, please wear mask. So masks are already available anyway. COVID has done one good thing uh, among all the bad things that he has done. So that has uh, started the practice of wearing mask. When you have cough, for whatever reason, for whatever duration, please wear mask so that you are not a source of infection to the others. It may be TB, it may be COVID, whatever it is. Wear mask. When you are coughing, wear mask even inside the house so that your children are not suffering. So this is an important thing. Before diagnosis itself, you should start wearing mask, even in public places. And please stop smoking. That is an important thing. Of course, this is not the forum we are discussing TB, but it is related to TB. So smoking also increases the chance of you getting TB as well as you start coughing. And whatever the disease that you have, that you start spreading to others. So instead of spreading disease, you please spread love and compassion. Nice of you, doctor. Nice of you. This is now it's Thank time you. to one second, so, doctor. I think I mean you know that done a lot of research. He asked very probing questions to you, but my question is a very general question. You observe that I mean this the tuberculosis has now remained the problem of uh, the lower income and the uh, underdeveloped countries, whereas most of the developed countries through better hygiene standards and all that have overcome this. Remember, I mean, America, United States, United States, United Kingdom, Europe, they all had their problems in the 19th century. But now, I mean, they have almost overcome this tuberculosis problem. Uh, what is the role of uh, public hygiene and uh, sanitation uh, in controlling this tuberculosis, especially? Sir, public hygiene and sanitation, not only for tuberculosis, any other health diseases, it prevents. That is always is a very, very important aspect. For spreading the TB, to control the TB, Dr. Vichandra has mentioned cough hygiene. When you are coughing, uh, 
not only a mouth we have to cover we have to cover both nostril and mouth and we have to cough so that it should not spread in the hair that is very very important as you mentioned about the developed countries yes when there is a developed countries there the malnutrition malnutrition is the one which is uh, causing the which is giving more tb cases in our country if we increase our uh, if we reduce our malnutrition status certainly the immunity for immunity the nutrition is required our immunity automatically increases so those coming from the malnutrition you can reduce however you have to remember india is called as a capital city of a diabetes we are the prevalence of diabetes is increasing the prevalence of smoking not only among males you used to tell that now it has become a status for the females also other gender also they have started uh, as they, they also increased so unless we prevent these smoking cessation alcohol abstinence or alcohol de addiction the addiction programs uh, upgrading the mal malnutrition status good nutrition so that increases the immunity and hiv almost uh, uh, that we have taking care that we have, you should sustain these are the things and workplace uh, workplace identification early diagnosis these are the things that we can overcome that we can achieve that ntb sir rightly uh, rightly mentioned sir these are very important yes, things yes uh, something that i just remembered uh, to add to what manish sir had said Uh, strangely in the victorian era in europe this tb is was called as a romantic disease as because <laughs> jan kids because, jan kids yeah 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 jan because kids. many many, many malnourished uh, malnourished Beauty. artisans poets uh, especially the, the words of uh, lord brown if someone can scroll on the screen is that he wished to die in conception declaring how pale i look i should think like a, to die of conception because then the women would say see that book right how interesting he looks in time is a victorian way because people thought something strangely romantic with this tv so now it's uh, now it's time to conclude uh, yeah. on just a just for it's a la, la vinod because you have yeah. told the romantic uh, this one john kits is the one at the age of 26 he is died even though yes, yes. little little literature is there each and everything uh, because he was a intern he actually cared for the brother mother also he got the tb and died on whatever the love letters he has written to the girlfriend has become each and everything is a very important whatever the outcome it has been given tb is also called as a beautifying disease but the yes, thing is yes. it beautifies not only that the microbiology says tb bacilli how they describe is a pink curved and slender it's a beautification however wherever there is a beauty there is a dangerous but the thing yes, is yes. this beaut- this bacilli is not only a beautiful bacilli it is also very intelligent bacilli because it adapts and it eats over the drugs whatever the poison we give and becomes intelligent so it become it is sustaining because of that only it adapts easily so it is very intelligent and beautiful whenever there is a intelligent beauty together finish yes sir yes sir i remember in fact it was called as white plague during that era and the one thing strangely that uh, that's ironic in the case of tb is that tb the bug tb type tuberculosis bacillus uh, evolved with humans most of these zoonotic diseases come from bovine animals to humans but in the case of tb it's very special that even in the neolithic era about 9000 years and uh, evolution traces us back as 73000 years that this bug evolved with humans this bug is a byproduct of human evolution this is what we have read and now it's time to conclude doctors i would like to thank all of you for your valuable time on march 24 1882 robert cock announced his discovery of mycobacterium tuberculosis the bacteria that causes tb dr cock's discovery was the most important step taken towards the control and elimination of this deadly disease a century later march 24 was designated as world tb day a day to educate public about the impact of tb around the world until tb is eliminated world tb day won't be a celebration but it's a valuable opportunity to educate the public about the devastation caused by tb and how it can be stopped thank you all for the participation of this webinar we would like to thank all of the speakers dgpab and all of the viewers of this channel a uh, thanks and gratitude from the bottom of our heart see you next time bye bye thank you Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.